Now, the Dutch Prime Minister, Mark Rutte, says he's confident that Europe will find a way to get aid to Ukraine, what we've just been talking about. The Prime Minister's in the final days of his term. In a sense, a caretaker Prime Minister, until the far-right politician Geert Wilders and his party form a government, having, of course, won the last election. Rutte told me earlier why the far-right performs so well in elections, despite a strong economy. Migration. And, and the big issue uh, in Europe, and also in my country, is migration, particularly asylum migration. Last week, again, 1,000 asylum seekers. Normally, we would have 15,000, 20,000 a year. Now we are close to 50,000, maybe even up to 70,000 a year. That's too high a number. And we have to bring those numbers down in a way that we still give protection to people who need it. But we cannot, as the Netherlands or Germany or, or Sweden, take care of all these numbers. Do you see a moderation of Gert Wilder's positions, you know, as well as everybody, that it's fine to say on the campaign trail one thing, but when the weight of office hits you, you realise the reality of what you can do. Do you see a moderating of Campaigning is poetry and governing is prose, eh? so it is always a bit more difficult. Right. We have to see, because I, I cannot, of course, talk for Geert Wilders and his party, and it will be a coalition, probably with my party being part of it, and if my party is part of it, it means that we will stay not only focused on the country, but also on the multilateral institutions, because they are crucial for our economic safety and our, uh, also our uh, direct safety, um, but also that we will stay involved in Ukraine, etc. Let's talk about this. So there's going to be an EU summit to provide, to discuss the issue. Now, standing where you were yesterday, President von der Leyen basically said, I'll give it one more go to get unanimity and then we'll have to go to plan B. Yes, that's true. Can't you just ring up Victor Orban and say, oh, Victor, for goodness sake, just come along with us? I must say he agreed uh, by leaving the room with the accession talks for Ukraine. And I'm cautiously optimistic that by early February, when we have this extra European Council, we could get an agreement on the money for Ukraine, the 50 billion. It would be good to do it with the 27. I agree with Ursula von der Leyen, if necessary, with the 26. What a terrible message is this sending to Vladimir uh, Zelensky. First of all, the US can't get it through Congress with uh, mm -hmm. the, the Republicans. Now Europe is being held hostage by Viktor Orban. And the poor man is, you know, the country is fighting its war. It sends a really negative message and a lack of hope. I understand that, but at the same time, he knows uh, that Europe will eventually, like von der Leyen said yesterday, I agree with her, we will somehow come to an agreement with the 27 or the 26 early February. So one country at this moment creating this discussion. But I do think that we will find a compromise with Viktor Orban and with Hungary on the 1st of February. The main issue now is not money, because he can still survive for a right. couple of months. The main issue is weapons is uh, making sure that he has all the material to uh, keep the airspace in Ukraine safe. That has to be the main issue. And there is my worry at the moment, that we have to do more. The other issue, of course, is which is very close to your country's heart, is shipping. Absolutely. The Red Sea. Yeah, Hugo Grotius, eh? the, the Free Sea. The so 6th, 17th is... century, we designed it. It was oh. a Dutch guy. Hugo de Groot, he comes from my country, and basically he created this, this, this understanding that our, the seas on this world, the, the waterways, should be free and for everybody to, to sail on. So you were involved? We are, because we believe that what the Americans and the Brits did uh, was crucial. Uh, and to you were involved? The sea. Yes. Th the French weren't? No, no. So, so here you see that, that different countries take different positions. But in the end, we all agree that it is crucial, of course, that this ends. And that, right. uh, but the question here is, do you try to fend off the rockets coming from the Houthi territory? Or do you try to attack them on their own territory, which I think is more effective? Your future. Now, you knew this was coming, so don't look surprised. Um, since you inelegantly suggested you want you were available for NATO, another job has come up. Chair, uh, President of the Council. Now, if you, are, you know, had to choose between, well, first of all, are you interested in president of the council? It's, it's, it, it's, it's coming vacant. I knew the question was coming up. Are but my you answer interested? Is, but my answer is, I'm afraid, Richard, my answer is that uh, what I said in October, I did say, and I'm still sticking to that, but I'm not going to add to it. It doesn't help. And if I'm now talking about any other job coming up, even yours, uh, presenting CNN in the future, it won't work. Choose a color. Yes, I think the color of my party. Yours and everybody else's. Right, come on over here. 
Now, this is not, this is a societal question. This is not about your country. It's not about you. It's all your company. How ready or otherwise are we? Or are we dangerously unprepared? The risk is this, yeah. Richard, that we will try to regulate it so much yeah. that we cannot have the positives from AI which we need as a society. But we should not be naive. So I would really put it in the middle. You go ahead, Dave. Which is very boring. Sorry for this. Well, but on this subject, relevant, you know. I would put it here. 